What's up, everyone? Welcome to Zetro's Toxic Vault. And today I have a really special guest, one of my influences, one of my heroes. You wouldn't be talking thrash metal if it wasn't for this guy. Bands like Discharge and GBH and his own band help pave the way. For all of us that do thrash metal, I'm talking about the exploited, and today we have Wadi. How you doing? I'm doing good. Good to have you in. It's good to be alive. <laughs> well, like I was saying to everybody, um, I, uh, I, there would be no thrash metal. There would be no Exodus. There would be no Metallica, Megadeth, any of the core bands that started it if it wasn't for bands like the exploited, the rawness, the, 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 the ferocity, the, the lyrical content, just all of it. Honestly, we would just be, angry. Well, that's we, we we were angry kids. It's like you know, um, our lyrical content consisted of stuff like you know, kicking your face and rape and murder your wife. I mean, that's the early stuff of thrash that we and it was all stuff that we heard from you know, discharge records and, and exploited albums and, and GBH and, and bands like that 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 really influenced us. And and um, I wanted to talk to you more about how did you start? What well, you were you were a 13 year old kid around. 1970, 1971. Yeah. What were you listening to at that time? What made you Before, get into this? Uh, when I was a kid, I was listening to T Rex, Gary Glitter, <laughs> uh, David Bowie, Roxy Music, Alex Harvey. Alex Harvey's a, a Scottish singer. Uh, he's a bit like he's a bit like Alice. He's a bit like Alice Cooper type thing, but he was a. Uh, he's still a lot. A lot of Scottish bands sing, but. They try to put an English accent on or put an American accent on. But this guy sung with a Scottish accent. It's like, that's what I do. I always sing with a Scottish accent. I'm not trying... I did try to be... Right. A, I did try to be an English... I did try to be English or American. I'm Scottish. I'm proud to be Scottish. And uh, so so I used to look up to Alex Harvey when I was 14. He supported, he supported Slade. And, uh, and Alex Harvey were fucking fantastic. Brilliant. Totally brilliant showman. But the guy's dead now, but... But, uh, that's what I used to listen to, and then I started listening to like Nazareth and uh, uh, all different shit. So you like the dark? Did you listen to Sabbath? I, did you like nah, the darker stuff? Nah, I never listened to that. Did you listen to Black Sabbath? Nah, I didn't like that shit. I, 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 used, to, I used to listen to James Brown. James Brown, so soul yeah. music as well. Yeah, I listen to a lot of James Brown, and uh, I was seventeen. I joined the army at seventeen. How about early punk music like Sham Sixty Nine? Sham, Jimmy Porter is a fucking wanker. <laughs> the singer for Jimmy. Sham were a good band. Sham were a good band when they started. When they started, Sham were a great band. But Jimmy Pursley, the singer, is a fucking asshole. He's a fucking pedophile, fucking wine. But as a, as a youth, was that an influence no, even before that? No, the first. But when I was in army, I, I, never, I never heard punk until I was uh, about twenty. I was about twenty when I first heard. But uh, I was about tw I was about twenty when I first heard punk. Nineteen twenty. I first heard punk. And what was the first punks that you, that you heard? Was it obviously the English stuff? Ah, it was it was the early stuff, like the damned, the sex pistols. Clash. The clash. I met I met the clash a couple of times. I, I used I used to go up with a girl and she was a fucking just a, a slag. She used to shag fuck all the bands. But but I was I was just new into punk. And this girl knew the, she knew these bands for like for the seventy six and almost like she was from, from London. And uh, she used to fuck on the band, so she used to go to get. So we we go to the concerts at the Clash and that, and we got on the guest list and that, and that was quite cool. So when you started singing punk music, was that before or after? Because I know you said you joined the army around seventeen. No, I, I left the army. I was in Germany in the army. I was about twenty, and uh, and I heard and I heard punk music, and it just changed. It's hard to explain, but it just changed my life for that. It felt so. It felt like it was a. Music for the working class, the rebellious music. The first, like, the first, like, damned and damned and the X-ray specs, vibrators, UK subs, sham, up, the upstarts, all these loads of bands using the banshees. Well, I used to look up, to, I used to look up to all these bands because that's that's what influenced me to start a band. But we, so that's why I, that's why I left the army because I, I couldn't. I couldn't have I got a strict dress code in the army. Right. Right, so I had to fucking change my... I had to put my clothes in outside it, in a bag and that and get dressed and end up getting put in jail in the army. So, so I left. And then uh, I left the army. I started, my first punk gig was... The uh, first punk band I seen was the Vibrators. And every, everyone was spitting and that. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? 
<laughs> totally with the fucking got spitting and that and rolling about the floor I go oh, fucking mental and it was br- and that was just changed my life and so uh, I tried to get a job like I was I was the first guy to have I was the first guy to have a Mohican uh-huh. I was the first guy to have a Mohican the punks you know so that's and so we had a Mohican back then every night was a fight night everybody wanted to fight you and laughed at you and fucking you, call, you can't get in look at, look at this Look at the mesh you're in. You can't get in. So, so, uh, not that. And so, I, I was unemployed. I left the army. I was unemployed, and I and I, I'd go to the unemployment centre, and they'd tell me, "No, you can't. You, you only got a job unless you unless you shave your hair right. off and and change." And I'm like, "Fuck you! I'm never changing." Sure. I'm never changing. So I started the band. So I started the band and never looked back. Now you um. The exploited was was going, and and you took over for your brother. Did you? I got two, I got two brothers. My brother Willie, and my I got a brother Terry. He started. Okay. He started. He just started a band called Exploited, but they were only fifteen or something, and they they done two two or three concerts at school. They were just young kids, and they never done any proper gigs, and they, they were they were, on, they were only around six months or something, and then they split up, and so I I kept the name of the band, and I kept the guitarist. And I started exploiting proper, but my brother's band was, was just like school kids for like, uh-huh. just like never done fuck all. It wasn't really exploited. It was just like I just took, I just really took the name. I started and started. I started the band with my brother. My brother had a band called Exploited. But do you remember your first gig with? with oh, the, oh, the first gig, first gig we done was the YMCA, and we got paid five pound. Really? Yeah. You got paid five. That was big. But that's big money. No, it wasn't big money. No, we got paid five pound only. Could, and we could play again on the condition there was no damage. So we never got asked back. <laughs> well, you couldn't promise that. But well, that was us too. There was a lot of venues even here in the Bay Area that wouldn't have Exodus because of they knew what was going to happen at the show. And a lot of people said, hey, Zetro, why don't you guys play this place? And I'm like, ah, they won't have us. Why don't you guys play this? They won't have us. Right. You guys destroy the place exactly. every time we play, which I welcome. I loved it. I think, it's like the first... For the first two years, they exploited, when they exploited. No one would give us gigs because everyone said, constantly, every back then, every punk was dead. So, uh, so none of the promoters wanted to touch punk bands because they said it was dead. It was another music fashion. But so, and plus, so we used to hire, we used to hire venues, hire, we hire uh, hotels and we play the hotels and, sm- and they get smashed up. And we'd have, we'd have a, we'd have a local following called the Barmy Army, like, but they'd be. There'd be six hundred people who used to fall there, so skinheads and punks. Right. Because I used to be a skinhead before I was a punk, and uh, and back back in the early days, skinheads and skinheads and punks got on together. They were the same. There wasn't, there wasn't a divide. Right. Like what, what happened later on, but before, but in the early eighties, it was, it was the skinheads and punks liked the same music, so they were both together. But uh, so we used to hire. We couldn't play anyway. Nobody, nobody would give us gigs because every gig we played was got was, was, was fights and. and one, one person would start fighting, then everybody would start fighting, and then everything gets smashed. Then the fucking that to me that was, that was just normal. Well, it seemed like that to me because um my right. I would start. I went to my early punk shows were probably I was about 17, 16, 1980, 81. I remember seeing you guys for the first time at a place in San Francisco called the On Broadway. Oh, yeah, we had the fight suit as well. Oh, fuck, man. And I remember I um and again. I have long hair. I liked hard rock and roll, but I liked punk music as well. And the fucking punks gave me shit. Hippie, cut your hair. I get in, you know, to slam dance with them. They target me. So I remember seeing the first time I saw the exploited, and I had I was working washing dishes with this guy who was like, "You got to go see this band. You got to see these guys. They're called the Exploited." So we went to the OB, and I remember fucking show starts. You guys, could, Big John comes out. Wailing his guitar. Why do you came out? You had this fucking mic stand. Pop this kid right in the head. And the show started. It was one of the most fucking coolest violence. I'm a haul of this band. Who are these guys? I love this shit. And from then on, I was into street so, punk big uh, time. We, we, we had look, I, was just, I used to do a lot of drugs there. Like for 34 years, I used, I used to do drugs, speed every day for 34 years, apart from twice I got busted. Uh, but, then, but, but so then I didn't really care. But we used to get so. I used to get so many fights, yeah, but that was, but, but then that was to me. It was just normal. I didn't, I didn't really think about it. But uh, I we played, we played on Broadway. That day. We played. There was a band called uh, the Fuse. The song got 
Fuck ups. Aye. Bob Knox is One the heart, one's a hard brother. Fuck, yeah. Just like Goo and the other. So, they gave me the single, I still got it. Eh? And that was fucking brilliant. It was a seven track single. On the back of my jacket, I used to have fucking spray paint fuck ups with Aye. their logo on the back. Aye, yeah, I remember that. I remember, remember that. There. My Aye. friend was good Aye. friends with Bob Noxious. That's right. why we went and saw the experience. Because we, we went there and we ended up, we ended up one, I don't know what band, one of this band. 